Welcome to School of PE Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Miller, and I'm so glad that you could join me this week. We are going to discuss topics about FE, PE, and SE, and we're also going to answer questions that will help students prepare for their exams. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the School of PE's podcast. I'm Chris Miller, and I have Justin Meyerson with us today. He's a PE out of the Big Apple, New York City. So he is going to talk about resident engineering and inspection today. So to me, that's a little bit Greek, but for you engineers out there, I'm sure you guys have an idea of what that is. But Justin is here today to kind of give us an idea of what it's like to do what he does. So Justin, welcome aboard. Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm not a... Um a licensed PE yet. I've passed the exam. I'm still the, my license is pending. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, congratulations for passing the exam. Thank you. Uh, when did you take the exam? Um, October of last year. Oh, okay. So recent, very nice. Yeah. So you, were you scheduled to originally take it in uh, April and then COVID kind of closed them all down? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It's, uh, it's stressful. I mean, I feel bad for those in California because last year they lost both the uh, spring and the fall exams. So, mm-hmm. Um, well, great. So again, welcome aboard there, Justin. Um, getting ready for the holidays, I'm assuming, out there in the Big Apple. I'm sure it's a pretty place to be. A lot of fun stuff probably floating around uh, New York City there. Um, mm-hmm. Can you give us a little bit of an overview or background about resident engineering and inspection? Um, yeah. So for uh, construction sites, uh, for the field that I'm in is for New York City agencies, like the New York City Department of Design and Construction um, New York City Department of Environmental Protection, that often um, consulting firms are hired to manage uh, construction projects. So typically you have like a competitive bid system where the low bid wins and then mm-hmm. the contractor has a contract to go and build um, you know, the, the project. And so the engineering team, the REI services, they go in to, to help manage that project. They help with contractor payments, make sure that there's a site safety is followed and um, make sure that the, the project runs smoothly. So it's just, it's managing the project on the engineering side. That sounds exciting. So a little bit of engineering, a little bit of project management kind of all yeah. meshed into one. That's pretty cool. So mm-hmm. let me ask you, so who oversees recruiting and hiring for resident engineering and construction, construction on inspector positions? Um, well, I, was hired by um, an MWBE minority firm coming out of uh, college, graduating from NJIT. I, I got a, a master's in civil engineering, and so I was I was recruited off of like a Monster. Oh, okay. Um, but it's uh, there's consulting firms, and um, you know, so it's uh, you could be hired by either a prime consulting firm uh, or in New York City. They often have uh, minority and women business enterprises where okay. a percentage percentage of the contract will go to one of these MWBE firms. And that's mm-hmm. the firm that I belong to. It's an MWBE firm. Very cool. So you said NGIT. I'm very familiar with it. A great university out there in Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, three of our instructors that teach for our review courses are actually, uh, they teach for NGIT. So um, maybe you've had them in your classes while you're at NJIT. So mm-hmm. uh, very good. Welcome. Welcome. All right. So, you know, engineering is an exciting field. Every day can be different. There's so many different things you can do. You know, you got civil, mechanical, chemical, all those out there. So there's, you know, there's many pathways that you can take, you know, in engineering itself. So at what point did you realize that, hey, engineering is the way I want to go? Well, actually, I wasn't. I started out in college. I went to Rutgers University for my undergraduate, and I started out as a mechanical engineering major, and then I switched to civil engineering, and then I switched to physics. And I actually got, I got an engineering degree and a physics degree. So I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was younger. It was, I wasn't trying to get multiple degrees. I was just sort of figuring out what I wanted to do uh, for my career. And then later, I did some physics research at Rutgers. Uh, I got a master's in physics. Oh, wow. And and then I I um, taught high school physics for a couple of years and that was not the, the right career for me. It's a, it's a very difficult job. I have a lot of respect for teachers. Um, <laughs> but uh, after that, I went back to engineering, which is what I really enjoyed, and I'm pretty happy now. I really do enjoy um, being a part of a management team for construction projects. 
Very cool. You took a, a nice journey yeah. to get to where you wanted to go, but it shows that you don't always have to know what you want to do. You right. Know, you, can, you know, sometimes you go down a, a different path. And yeah, I, I don't blame you. Teaching is hard enough, but teaching high schoolers is is a whole new beast of its own. That's for sure. Um, a lot right. of respect for those teachers out there. Um, so, well, I guess you could probably give some good advice, you know, since you didn't take a direct path to engineering. So, you know, let's say you're invited back to your high school right. for a career day. And a senior walks up to you and says, hey, Justin, you know, I'm thinking about going into engineering. You know, can you give me some insight into what are some of the things I can expect along my journey to engineering? What, what would you tell that senior? Um, well, the, the thing is, for me, I had like what you have in your imagination about a job. It's often could be very different from the actual job itself. So it could be romanticized, I think, uh, especially when you're in high school about what the career entails. Right. In high school, I, I actually went, uh, there was some bridge design software. There was a competition that I, I did. Uh, I was like one of the finalists. I didn't win, but uh, that got me interested in engineering. Um, I, Mr. Green was my a very influential teacher that I had in high school, my drafting teacher. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I was like a finalist in this, in this bridge design competition it got me interested in engineering um and so i had all these romantic ideas of what it would be like but i think there's a lot of more sometimes in, in the real workplace like grinding work mm -hmm. um there's some things but you do have moments where you have interesting problems to solve in the fields to try and figure out how to construct something well you're not really instructing the contractor to do it but you sort of had discussions in the field to sort of figure out how to, if let's say if there's utilities underground, how are you going to, to go around them? If there's like an electrical utilities, not where you, uh, it was laid out in the in the plans. So there, the, that's the fun side of engineering is when you have real problems to solve. Right. But the the negative could be sometimes having to grind work and uh, paperwork and filling, mm -hmm. you know, for for the city agencies. So it's sort of. Um, you do have some of that fun stuff that you sort of romanticize about, I think, when you're in high school. Mm -hmm. But um, the overall job is it's not as as you know, it, it could be a both sides of having some fun things to do. And sometimes it's sort of like a grind. So, yeah, I mean, it's well yeah. said. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think a lot of times people get and not just about engineering, but I think sometimes get people get caught up on you know, the romanticizing things that they see in a particular field and, and they kind of maybe tend to overlook some of the more grindier portions that come along mm -hmm. with it as well. So, you know, I know we kind of got off topic there. So um, let me get back to, you know, the resident engineering. So at what point in the process is uh, a resident engineering, a, a resident engineer suggested to begin? Um, so the construction jobs, they often begin in the spring, but uh, typically, um, for let's say for a project for the New York City Department of Design and Construction, um, they would hire a resident engineer, re resident engineering inspection team, which would consist of a resident engineer uh, who is the lead construction manager, basically on, on the engineering side, uh, an office engineer who, help, mm -hmm. who helps assist the resident engineer, which is what my position is at, at the moment, and an inspector, or it could be multiple inspectors um, in order to you know go and uh, write daily inspection reports for the work that's being done. So the, the, the team is often hired, let's say, in the, in the fall or mm -hmm. the winter, and then they have to set up the field office where they, they, have, they could have a trailer or they could rent um, a, you know, a part of a building. To, and in the field office, they would set up like uh, file cabinets mm -hmm. to put the, the labor laws, post the labor laws, and set right. everything up in the, in the office. So typically, you would be hired in the fall and winter, set up the office, and construction starts in the spring. That, that's for most projects. Makes sense. Sounds like a lot of planning and logistics involved, um, mm -hmm. which is always good to have. So, you know, I, you know, I've seen building inspectors and, you know, maybe you have some traffic inspectors, but what are some of the duties of a construction inspector? Um, so construction inspectors, of course, they have to read through the contract drawings and specifications and that also city agencies will have mm -hmm. specifications like the new york city department of transportation the uh department of environmental protection they have their own specs so they have to be well versed in reading through the specs it's hard to remember all of the specs but you have right. to be able to to look things up um testing concrete 
doing slump tests and um, air entrainment tests and, and creating uh, concrete cylinders. You need an ACI uh, certification to do that. That's something that they do. Um, taking samples of soil or asphalt and like measuring the uh, temperature of asphalt mm. is there's temperature requirements. Um, and of course, the primary thing inspectors do is writing uh, daily inspector reports and always uh, the inspectors always in communication with the resident engineer and office engineer to make sure to relay any information that of what's going on and also making sure that they're following the uh, safety protocols like um the the, the construction workers <clears throat> very nice appreciate the insight on that so you know every project or just about everything we do involves some kind of risk right we're always looking for my, ways to maybe reduce risk or maybe re reduce the impact of a risk that does occur so in what ways does REI services reduce risk? Well, the city likes to hire consulting firms because that is sort of transferring the risk to the consultant. So the REI, so if anything went were to go be, uh, bad, which I haven't experienced, but you know, knock on wood, <laughs> um, that the liability would be, um, you know, whoever's managing the project. So. Uh, so the RE, the resident engineers, they do have to think a lot about risk, you know, mm -hmm. how you word um, emails and direct the contractor that could come up in claims. So it's very important to consider um, how you communicate to the contractor um, and but also maintenance and protection of traffic that needs to be set up correctly, making sure that um, the site safety mm -hmm. is a priority, that workers are wearing the proper uh, PPE. And, you know, there's, there's a. Yeah, so that's, I think it's just uh, transferring risk to the REI team. So it's very important to consider uh, how you communicate to the contractor. It's very important. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you know, communication is great, but effective communication is even better. So, um, you know, can you talk about some or what kind of government agencies would maybe recruit the services of an REI? Um, so the city agencies, I mentioned before, the uh, for New York City, because that's mm -hmm. the, the where I've worked for the past six years or so. Uh, New York City Department of, of Design and Construction, Department of Environmental Protection, Department of Transportation. Um, just so you know, the the Department of Design and Construction, I, I think it was like 1996, they were created because of all the different city agencies. You have the transportation, you have DEP, you have parks, um, and you have all these agencies in, in charge of different parts of the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so the DDC was uh, created to be to an uh, all encompassing sort of to, to manage all the different elements. So you could have a, a project that you have, you're repaving the roadway, mm -hmm. you're in installing new catch basins and sewer, and you're putting in uh, new trees, which I, I had a project just like that in uh, Corona Plaza in Queens. And so you actually have budget codes for each of these individual city agencies. Oh, wow. And so you have to, and so the money comes from the different agencies, but then in uh -huh. New York City Department of Design and Construction, they are, they, they're managing um, this project that has all these different aspects from different agencies. And there's also like the, the TBTA, Tri-Borough um, Bridge and Tunnel Authority, and the MTA. So, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of agencies. Yeah, it sounds like it, like A through Z, it sounds like. So, yeah. you know, so what are some of the concerns that you can find as a resident engineer? Well, um, contractors not following safety regulations, like as an inspector, there's some things like, you know, workers smoking on site, like sm smoking in a, in a trench where it could be next to a gas main. Like there's, oh, and it's, it's very difficult to sometimes to get the, you know, workers to follow all the safety protocols. It's, it's easier said than done. And um, sure. resident engineers, they have the ability to write field memos and, and field orders to direct the contractor to the, the command them that they have to follow um, the right safety regulations or whatever, whatever reason that there is that you could write a field order or a field memo that the contract is not building something correctly or um, and and if the contract doesn't doesn't com comply you can d deduct money oh, so wow. that's sort of the recourse um, but so for concerns also uh, I'd say not properly stockpiling materials a big one where they, you know, uh, if you have ductile iron pipe mm -hmm. for water main, you want to make sure that the caps are put on uh, and that it's put in a, in a clean, good condition because otherwise you'll have like rodents will go into the pipe. Oh, wow. And, and so, 
Um, yeah, so there's there's um, there's a lot of issues that can come up in the construction site. Yeah, it sounds like definitely don't want any rodents in the pipes, that's for sure. Um, yeah. So what qualifications or certifications are required for resident engineers to practice? Okay, it's the requirement in uh, New York City um, to be a licensed professional engineer. Um, also OSHA 10 hour and some, I think sometimes OSHA 30 hour courses are required. Um, also being uh, the certifi certifications like a certified construction manager or a CCM mm -hmm. or a project management professional PMP are also desirable. Okay. Typically you'd wanna have a, a driver's license because it's di it often can be difficult to get to the site because the site, I had a project that was at a dead end street in, in Queens. <laughs> and yeah, and, and and then often the the field office can be up to a mile away. So you oh, typically wow. need need to have a, a car. It's very pretty useful. The one time I heard someone ever say that a car is useful in New York City. Usually you want to be <laughs> taking the public transportation to avoid the traffic, but it makes sense, especially if you got to do you know transfer back and mm -hmm. forth from uh, the site to the to the field office. So um, so you know when it comes to inspecting, whether it's buildings or sites. You know, there's always certain things or codes and standards that you should be familiar with. So, uh, you know, asking you, how familiar do you need to be with construction and building codes as a uh, resident engineer? Yes. Yeah, so there are the, the codes. So they have um, New York City Department of Transportation. They have standard highway specifications. They have these big volumes of uh, several, I think it's over a thousand pages. Um, and so they reference in the drawings. In the, in the construction drawings um, and specs, they'll often reference these uh, standards. And the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, they also have their standards for uh, sewer and water main specs and, and for trunk mains. And um, so the, there's a lot of different standards that one has to be versed in. And, but it, also just being able to look things up because there's mm -hmm. so much information, you, it's hard, you can't really know everything. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. So, is there are there any particular set of codes that you rely on the most? Um. Well, the let's say I've I've done a a bit of water main work and sewer work. It's the probably the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. They have water main standard drawings that those are relevant to. You. You're looking at those for when they're they're installing water main. Water water main is a pretty large part of the work that's going on. I can imagine. So, you know, when you go to a site or you're on site, what type of um, site safety indicators are you looking for? Um, well, I've mentioned before about like stockpiling. Right, right. Things that pop come to my mind are putting caps on rebar is a big one. Um, they have straps for where they have like a backhoe they use to lift um, like the ductile iron pipe and other heavy materials, those straps can get frayed and damaged. Um, but also just making sure that uh, workers have proper PPE mm -hmm. from the reflective reflective vests, the hard hat, boots, and, and um, safety glasses when it's applicable. Safety is definitely important. So, you know, we've talked yeah. about, you know, resident engineering, we've talked about construction inspector. One term I've heard you say a few times, and maybe you can expand on it is, what is office engineering? So that's um, my current position. It's uh, basically like an assistant resident engineer uh, is also a similar um, title. So it's, it's really to, to help with all the paperwork, to help process payments for the contractor. You maintain logs for um, submittals, change orders, uh, RFIs, and um, just a, it's a lot of document control. There's, there's uh, writing meeting, meeting minutes. Uh, helping with engineering calculations, sometimes you need to to do uh, like a quantity takeoff for some things. Um, you help uh, review the inspectors' inspection reports, and then also you could help with things like uh, change orders and time mm -hmm. extensions um, for you know submitting those documents. When um, and then what was I thinking of? <laughs> uh, there's also a, a punch list at the end of the project, and you have to help with that punch list of um, that's all when you go through a list of all the important items that were completed, like the uh, the water main, the mm -hmm. sidewalk curb. And so you, you, you do that at the end of the project. Yeah, very nice. So, you know, it sounds like a lot of the work that you do is on site, you know. 
on a particular you know area. So you know, COVID kind of struck us hard over you know for the last eighteen months or so. So how did COVID affect your ability to do what you do? Actually, I was working for a, a project for the New York City D Department of Design and Construction, and, and that project was uh, the funding was canceled due to COVID. Oh, wow. And so then, and then I moved on to another project working for the New York City DEP that I'm a part of now, which is a resiliency project to upgrade um, the wastewater treatment plants in New York City to make them more resilient for future hurricanes. So this happened because of Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Yeah. So basically installing flood walls, these concrete flood walls around the buildings and um, making things waterproof, raising electrical equipment, installing new pumps. And so uh, this is a part of the, the project that I'm part of right now. But yeah, so because of, of COVID, I, uh, I got the funding for my project was canceled. And luckily, there was another project that I was uh, able to, to join right away. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So, you know, today you've shared a lot of insight and some great information when it comes to resident engineering and inspection. But, you know, it, uh, you know, kind of come to the close of the podcast. I always like to try to have a little bit of fun with the guests and, you know, maybe talk about some things outside of engineering. So, you know, holidays are coming up next week. We got Thanksgiving here and New York's always a great place to be during the holiday season. So are there any places in New York that you like to hit up during the holiday season, especially this Thanksgiving holiday? Any places I like to go for Thanksgiving? Yeah, like, you know, if you're just kind of, if I was coming to New York during the holiday season, I said, mm -hmm. hey, Justin, where should I go during the holidays to kind of get the true experience of New York? Well, Rockefeller Center, that's a pretty classic one. They have the, the tree. I think it comes up right around Thanksgiving. Um, so that's, that's, I mean, that's when you're a kid, it's very, very nice to go there for, yeah. uh, for sure. Very nice. So what are your plans for the Thanksgiving holiday? I'm going back to my parents in Westchester County in, in uh, New York, and I'm going to have uh, a wonderful dinner. <laughs> yeah. Are you a turkey or a ham guy? Uh, turkey. I don't eat red meat, but it's, it's all right. No, I'm a turkey. <laughs> I, I tell you, nothing beats yeah. the smell of a turkey bacon in the oven. Mm hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, hey, Justin, you know, I appreciate you coming out here and spending some time with us. Love to have you back. I think what you do is a very interesting aspect of engineering. And I'd love to get into it a little bit deeper. So I'd love to welcome you back um, to the rest of you. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Be safe and enjoy that turkey. <laughs>